Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here today. I um, hope you had a wonderful holiday. And I'm um, sorry for missing last week. We definitely had some icy weather and I didn't want these guys to um, risk, uh, risk the roads and make it over here. So we decided to uh, be better safe than sorry and redo it today. So um, thanks for, for joining us here today. And um, yeah, so New Year's coming up. Uh, it's a great time for some New Year's resolutions. I'm not super big on them, but um, I do think about it a little bit. We did a little reset here in the studio. We've been working on changing things up a little bit. So um, that's kind of nice. We got, got, got everything kind of dialed in for starting out the new year. But for me, the new year's is all about painting and reading, listening to some music, going for my long walks, just really doing a lot of deep uh, observation and looking around and trying to stay off my phone. <laughs> Trying to stay off the news and social media, that, that'll be a big priority for me. And um, let's see, if you're on my mailing list, you've probably seen that we have a new pastel workshop that's very, very exciting. It's abstract in pastel and mixed media. And for me, this workshop is really about unlocking your creativity. And I think it will. Uh, so I'm thinking about it this morning then. During my almost, I hate to say it, 40 year career, as of almost 40 years as a professional artist, I really started out uh, at, that, at that time in my career when I graduated school, the prevailing style was really photorealistic airbrush painting. And I did that as an illustrator for companies like Disney and Nissan. So my journey uh, towards abstraction has definitely, uh, to say the least, been a really gradual one, but one that I think has been profoundly joyful and really amazing. Um, so looking back at that personal history, I can also see kind of hints and foreshadowing of this path, uh, but my recent work on the next level animals really proved to be a pivotal uh, just a, an amazing turning point. Uh, but we're also so lucky to have this great well of creativity, of art history to guide us. And I really relied on this both in the next level animals and then when I decided to really dig into um, complete abstraction. And complete abstraction being not relying on any um, observation to um, create a piece to really, um, not not that it's something from from nothing. It's not that, but I'm making that that shift from the representational, observational to abstraction. And I also think that the stereotype of the solitary artist just stabbing in the air for idea ideas, and you kind of suddenly arrive at these ideas fully realized isn't really realistic, wasn't for me. And I've always really maintained that creativity comes when you do the work, not the other way around. And that you have to ready yourself for and invite those creative sparks. Um, you kind of have to do the grunt work of it. So I did lots and lots of that. And I've learned as a painter to really trust the process that I put in place for myself and not so much the product. So I wasn't worried that I wouldn't get there. And I also believe in suspending one's judgment about whether something is good or bad, because the bottom line is as the creator, kind of don't really know. You might have a a feeling about it, but you kind of don't know in any super definitive way. I think that all you can kind of hope for is to open a, um, a portal through which your viewer can share in something that you felt or you saw while you were working and doing all that heavy lifting. And does it, <laughs> speaking of lifting, does it lift your viewer? Does it comfort you? Does it inspire you? And are you looking into the depths of that two-dimensional plane that we're working on 
and seeing what's what's really possible there. So the idea for this workshop came out of my, that impulse for my to find that in my own painting and the realization that I would have to carve a, a new pathway for myself to image making and that breaking free of the representational isn't easy. And I knew I would have to go through kind of a fire, but my enthusiasm just really just um, gained momentum as I went along. It was really amazing. Uh, so I decided, well, I'm gonna have to do a workshop that talks about how I did that. And so it really delves in both to the mysteries of that process because I think there you know whenever we're making real art it's there's more to it than just here's what you do but then there are these practicalities of here's what you do and how to engage how to engage in both the mystery and the practicalities and so I think it might feel like there's this monumental shift next ne necessary to moving to painting realistically but I think it can be done intentionally and really incrementally. So I designed the workshop with exercises and projects that are basically, well, not basically, exactly what I did for myself. And I, I hope that those will motivate you in a way that they motivated me really, because it was really amazing. So if you take the workshop, do the, the work of it without analyzing whether they fit your own artistic goals. Just do them and, and, and trust in the process. Even if you don't trust me, I hope you trust me. I think you should because I think I know what I'm talking about. But they are really specifically designed to get you out of your comfort zone. I did that for myself. So if you feel the heat of those exercises, it's probably because you're headed in the right direction. Um, and I think the projects themselves result in most, mostly abstracted images, but the principles applied can be applied to any style or any painting medium. There, those, those foundations kind of are thread through all art making so I think that they'll open you up no matter where you are on your path, your creative journey. So if you're even a little curious about abstraction, or maybe you, maybe you know exactly, hey, I want to do that, check out the workshop. It's so full and rich. It's really, really good. Um, so yeah, so please, um, the, it's on sale. It's on sale for 23 more days. And um, it's we always try to make everything as as reasonable as we can for for you guys. Uh, so I hope you'll check it out. Um, here's the the it's got a study guide that's I think it's about 72 pages. Um, there are 13 exercises and really exciting projects. Um, there's some mixed media in it, so there there's um, there's a lot going on in the workshop. And so we thought we'd sh I'd share some of my inspiration and what I did for myself in my studio um, as, I, as I was coming up with the new work for myself and then turned it into the workshop. So I went, I go on lo these long walks and so everything became inspiration, the, the shadows and the sidewalk cracks and then I went into the studio one week, couple weekends in a row and just made colossal mess. And I didn't know what I was doing really, but I also, again, I just trust the process and I produced a tremendous amount of work um, from those few weekends and went on for several months to um, create these big acrylic pieces. So um, then Roger came and <laughs> was shooting me, um, working on them. And then, of course, this one here is a finished piece. And then from there, I decided I was going to do a pastel workshop because I, you know, past love, love, love to bring everything into the pastel realm. So here's a couple of the 
uh, projects, but you can go to the sales page of the uh, website and um, see more about abstract in pastel and mixed media. Um, super colorful, super fun, and um, well, uh, I think I think worth it, worth a look. And today I am going to work from a landscape piece. Uh, it's it's a Bryce might have to find it for you. It's, I think it's in Friday Large. Let's see. None of those. I'm looking at the reference photos. Oh, I hope we have it. I did put it in. I put it in there for you. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. It's this. This is it. Yeah, so that's the, I'll put it, just put it down on the top down for you guys to see. Uh, so my plan today is to to do three quick versions of the reference photo, each getting progressively more abstract. And I've done that before. I'm not sure I've done it for the lives. I think I have. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot today um, as I um, am working. I'm more or less going to try to get into the zone if I can. Sometimes I'm able during the live stream. Sometimes it's a little difficult. Um, and um, we'll take some questions at the end. And that's that's kind of my plan for today. Just kind of really, really relaxing and really um, get, get in there and get some some painterly marks made. Awesome. And let me step let me step aside and see if I can find the reference. Yeah, and I'll just mention that um, um, if there's any questions okay. about the uh, workshop itself, the first thing to do is head to the website. Yeah. And, and there's a commercial there. You can read about it. Yeah. And most of your questions will get answered there. Yeah. Uh, the commercial is nice, and it, it shows you all yeah, the Yeah, the commercial is really nice. And show you the um, a lot of the projects and stuff. And Absolutely. Yeah. And that's just at the website. Just head over. You can yeah. It's right there. Also, I think that there's a, um, the, on YouTube, the commercials lives on YouTube too. So you can see the commercial on YouTube. All right, let me put my hair up so I can get out of the way. Hope people have nice plans for the, I guess it's, I don't even know, it's sun, Sunday night? Yeah, there's the, there's the reference for the, a simple landscape. Oops. Right. All right. So I have the reference. Um, a lot of people ask me, okay, why do you hold this in your hand if you've got the iPad? Oh, I've got to take these earrings off. And that's that's just habit from on my part. Um, I just have always done it that way. So I was painting way before digital. I think it's sort of like a um, just a comfort. <laughs> it's really a comfort zone thing more than anything else. So I'm this is pastel matte. It's the dark green, and I'm using a, a blue a spruce blue new pastel to do my little sketch in. Um, nice and fast and loose. Uh, it's my fave. The size here today is small because um, I'm going to do three really quick. Um, and it's, I think it's about um, seven by ten. Let me make sure. People always want to know. Yep, about seven by ten. Right. I'm going to pretend like I have music on. <laughs> today. So this is, yeah, this harks of abstraction because it's so loose.
bit of this. That's nice. So during the workshop, I talk about just how I'm thinking about these things and I go about it. I'm loving doing the big paintings. Super fun. That looks good. I'm taking a little bit of license here, but not too much. Then Mm. Nope, that's not what I want. It's like this. All right, I'm going to kind of live with some of that a little bit, Maybe a little bit. So thinking about Oops, I didn't want to do that. Maybe even No. 
that up. Okay, all right, I like that. Okay, all right, so let's take this from there. Now, tape. We're going to go for one more. But that one's pretty loose, so I'm like, okay, how am I going to, what am I going to do with it? Have any questions so far? Okay, Good. I get this. I'm going to do them the same size, so just How's that brush? Okay, great. Um, are there paper choices that you prefer for abstract painting? For apps, well, you know what? What I think about for the abstract is something that's capable of taking mixed media. So I mean, there's, so there are several options there, um, from the uh, Reeves B BFK or uh, or Fabriano watercolor paper to the pastel mats, great. Um, UART is also great. So um, I happen to enjoy the, the mixed media approach to abstract. So um, yeah, again, there, there are a lot of options there, so, okay. Well, just to um, expand mm -hmm. on that question a little mm -hmm. bit, um, you did say there was a type of paper that didn't take water color underpaintings very well. Um, well, it did. What, the type mm. that Tony likes, remember? We were talking about that. Oh, yeah, that's um, La Carte. La Carte, you cannot get wet. Um, yeah, so La Carte. Um, yeah, Tony li likes La Carte a lot, but Tony's a pretty much straight uh, pastel. He does, yeah, he, he does. So um, let's see. Now, this one. get a little more angular. A little bolder with the, the color. Maybe I'll pump the color up a little bit. Let me come in here. So there's lots of ways of approaching moving it different directions. Let's see.
about what would be fun. Just to clarify, Marla, are you using the piece, the painting that you just did as your reference, or are you going back to the original reference? Both. Because I, uh, yeah, both. Actually, let me go. that work. Okay. It's kind of fun. Now, let's, uh, what I want to do right now before I do the last one is I want to put these side by side just to see because there are aspects of, of this that I really like. There are aspects of this one that I really like. Do you want to put them down on the palette so we could? Yeah, is that better? Yeah, it'd be better. Okay. Yeah. So, both kind of wild. But um, there are definitely aspects of this one that I like and this one. Um, I like some of the mark making. I, this one has a, there was one point when, as I was working on it, like it really, when I, when I put this green on there, it really created a really strong quality of light, even stronger than this one in some sense. So that's kind of interesting information as I do the last one. Um, 
put these here. Unfortunately, I didn't have exactly the same paper. This is close. It's the light green. But I think it'll work out. Now. Okay, should I measure again? I might as well. So that they're all three year apples to apples. Pretty much right to the edge here. Okay. Ooh, it's, it got out there really fast. <laughs> it's good. I like it. I like it. Oh boy. Just deciding with if I want.
it's real easy to take it too far, so I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it. So that's it. So I want to look at all three. I love this last one. <laughs> all right. Yep. Better put them in order. And could go further, could take it even further. And this one still has a teeny bit of a landscape fill, so you could take it even outside of that. Great. Okay. So we had a couple of questions yeah. that came yeah. in during okay. the uh, during the good show here. So, um, was the palette? Did you use the same palette for um, every one, or did you change it up? Well, I definitely changed it up. Uh, um, you know, this this I'm you know basically looking at um, local color to guide me. This one, I'm exaggerating and um, imagining some color. So, taking a little bit of what I see, and this one, um, believe it or not, I I do see some of this some of these colors in this. Um, that I used here, but I'm amplifying them and exaggerating them. If I see a hint of something, I'm like, okay, I'm going to use that. And then um, using the principle of, you know, e echoing color. So I, I, I put the orange in here. I, I knew that it needed to go elsewhere in, in, the, in the little piece. So um, just using the principles of, of, of composition and design to help guide me as well. So yeah, it's super fun. Want to want to do a couple more? Um, I, I, um, I could do one more. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Um, did your 100 series lead help lead you to abstraction? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I've been at it for a long time. I did a series of I, those. I did a series of really abstracted florals, big, big paintings. Um, so, you know, I've been on this path quite, quite a long time, but the next level animals really did, um, you know, put me over the top with that. And then, you know, I, I just have the, such a impulse <laughs> to push myself in new directions, um, for my students and, and for myself too. I, you know, I get, um, um, really anxious about learning and you know wanting wanting to 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 do new stuff okay let's do one more this has got a little mark on it that's okay so this time i'm just gonna eyeball it i kind of know it's about about like that So this time, how about um, a little bit different kind of color idea? Let's around a little bit. Ooh, that Terry Ludwig really.
fun. Ooh, I'm glad you guys made me do another one. <laughs> I like this. Cool. here. What's that still saying? Not this. I don't like that. Definitely like that gray. Awesome. This is a really hard pastel and it's really just cutting into the layers more than anything else. Red, can't really even tell. Yeah, okay. I'm going to live with that. <laughs> now what do we got? Keep going, but... Right. So if you want to learn more about 
um, doing this, if this is exciting to you, the idea of moving away from the representational, even, even a little bit. I mean, the, the thing about the workshop, if your intent is um, not complete abstraction, if you're just um, wanting to not be quite so married to your reference photos, which I know a lot of us are, I know I tend to be, you know, I'll find myself in the studio and I've got a photo in front of me and I'll paint it and, yep, that looks just like that. <laughs> and that's not usually my, uh, my big hope when I'm painting. It's really to make more of a piece of art. So um, this workshop will, even, even if your, your idea is to just kind of nudge yourself away from that reference, um, it's a good one. So... Or if you want to just go completely nuts, it's a good one. So, all right. Um, any more questions to wrap up today? Yeah, this one is a, uh, uh, kind of a long one, or not okay. a long one, but involved. Which would, okay. this would be best served by joining the, the group. Yeah, yes. And, and, <laughs> yes. and doing, doing the lessons. But can you talk about when you use hard versus soft pastels? Sure. Um, you know, well, they, they do different things. And um, I'm going to usually start, um, w no, matter, no matter what my intent, whether it's abstract or representational or portrait, whatever it is, I'm going to start usually with a harder pastel with the idea that I'm going to slowly build up the, the layers. Now, these I probably went a little bit, you know, bolder, went for it a little bit more in terms of the soft pastels. Then I also use the hard pastels to for mark making and digging through <coughs> excuse me, the layers of the soft pastel at the end. So the hard pastels can be really effective in that too. So really getting really familiar with your sticks, lots of mileage is going to allow you to, when you pick up whatever brand, and you could see they have lots of brands, but I know when I pick up this Giro, I have a really good idea of what it can do, what it cannot do, what it will do for me in the, its characteristics and how it will interact with the other layers. And so that's a matter of um, mileage and understanding of what all of these guys do. So, yep. Okay. All right. I think that's it. I think I'm a little worn out. I have a critique stream to do for my monthly um, people in, in a little bit here. So um, I'm going to call it a day here and see you next time. All right. Thanks for joining and I hope you have a great New Year's. All right. Bye-bye.